We are live, I can see um, we're live and we've got some eyeballs. Amazing. So hello, hello everybody. Welcome to this week's Lunchtime Live. For those of you who've just joined us, today we are looking at how to set up an email automation in MailChimp to nurture your leads. So Jenny here is going to be um, doing a demo. So Jen's an email specialist, but a MailChimp specialist in particular as well. So do you only work with MailChimp, Jen, generally? Uh, generally, yes. Uh, I dabble with Salesforce and things like that, but um, MailChimp is my main one, yes. Okay, fab. Um, so Jenny's going to be actually doing a demo of how to set up a simple automation within MailChimp, which is an email marketing system. And you're going to be looking at how you can set up a simple workflow for somebody who has maybe just joined a business's newsletter list, aren't you, Jen? Yes. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct, yes. Okay, fab. So maybe you've got a um, a box on your website, a form on your website saying subscribe to our newsletter to stay updated, for example. So once people do subscribe to that newsletter, how you can then set up an automation that might go on for a number of weeks, or potentially even a number of months, right? I don't know um, whether, that, whether that would be best practice, but to keep them engaged with your business. And of course, you can automate that flow so you don't have to be manually writing those emails every week and sending them you can plan them all in advance then as soon as somebody subscribes to your newsletter they will just get added into that um, into that flow so oh great i can see the comments come in here fabulous um yeah so we're going to get started then so jen to begin with can you see those comments as well jen come in the questions at all well i can um, see michelle's just said. I can see michelle's that's perfect yes yeah so we should be able to see any comments and questions come in there, which is great. Um, so to get started, Jen, do you just want to tell us why you love MailChimp? Um, yeah. Why you think it's a good option for businesses? Because maybe some viewers might not have a MailChimp account yet. Um, some might be thinking, OK, what email software should I sign up to, for and use? So why, is, why do you think MailChimp is a good choice? Um, so I have been working in email for a fair few years now and I've used various different tools and I find that MailChimp is the most user friendly of the email marketing tools that I've used. Um, especially as a beginner, if someone's not really worked with email much or design, MailChimp kind of provides you with an easy uh, drop drop and drag building um, features and it just keeps everything super simple so that's why I use that. okay simple and easy yes and is is it obviously it's free to begin with there are other, other accounts free as well to begin with you know obviously not like Salesforce is, is more suitable for larger companies but MailChimp is quite a good option for multiple multiple size companies isn't it even if you yeah. like a one-man band through to a it gets quite advanced MailChimp, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. Um, but then I feel like the free account is pretty generous. Um, you can do quite a lot with it without having to invest any money. Um, I discovered lately with a client who we've been working with that um, they've changed it a little bit, the plans, um, and uh, they charge you, I think it only starts from like 9 99 and then as it, goes past uh, the 2000 mark you get charged 7.99 per like block of contacts as you grow which it feels pretty reasonable and it's only um on a monthly rolling contract so if it does become very expensive which is a good problem to have you can always cancel it you're not kind of fixed into an annual payment or anything like that okay cool so you're basically paying the, the more contacts you have the more you're paying yes it used to be um, also, you could pretty much have as many users as you like as well, but that's changed. Um, you can only have one user on the free plan. Um, as soon as you start paying, you can have three. And then as, as you go up to like the enterprise, you can have five. So they are kind of like making it stricter, but the platform itself is getting better. So they've obviously started to put a lot more work into it. There's loads of more functionality than there used to be. So it's kind of understandable why um, they're kind of making it a bit bit harder to use all the tools because you used to be able to use everything in the free plan until until you met a certain level of customers um but now that's changed so you can't do like uh you can't schedule an email on the free plan anymore um which is you know a little bit annoying if you want to plan ahead 
Uh, mm-hmm. So then you do naturally just start paying the nine ninety nine just for that ease of kind of planning your marketing, really. Yeah, but obviously totally worth it if you know you've got an email list that you, you've you've probably paid to get those emails right, and these are leads for your business. So absolutely, yeah. the 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 amount of money you need to pay is very small compared to other marketing tools you have to use. It's only uh, yeah ten pounds to begin with, which isn't that much, really. Yeah. Okay, great, fabulous. Um, and when when you said users, I presume um, you mean just people who have access to like the management of the account. Yes, yeah, so logins. Yeah. Um, yeah. So generally, um, when I used to create uh, f- accounts for like freelance work, I used to just add myself in and the client, and then we just swap over um, and both create create two owners. But now you have to um, only have one at the beginning. And then you can only have three for a very long time until you pay more. But it's fine for a small team. And it's yeah. probably best practice to only limit so many people anyway. Yeah. So everyone's not in there fiddling with the emails. Yeah. <laughs> Too many yeah. tips from the kitchen. I remember we had a lot of logins in our in, in our old team. But it was kind of handy, but it wasn't necessary anyway. So you can work. You can get by with, with just those logins anyway. Yeah. Okay, great, amazing. So that's why Mailchimp is a good choice. Um, it's simple, it's affordable, it's really easy to use. Limited HTML, I think you said as well. So yes. some email systems can get quite techy, right, with how you build the emails. But Mailchimp yes. is like drop and drag. That's what I said. I did say that good line earlier, didn't I? If you're not a HTML pro, then this is the ideal one um, because a lot of the email uh, platforms are quite code heavy. Um, which is great and you can still custom build your templates and if you are a HTML pro you can still use this platform as well and you can add blocks into the drop and drag and drop builder and you can have your own HTML boxes within the drag and drop design so it is pretty flexible but if you're not then this is the tool really that you should use yeah so you have the option to code if you want to but if you don't then you don't need it exactly Okay, amazing. So you're going to show us, Jen, how to set up a simple automation um, yes. today. So I guess maybe just a little bit start with at the beginning, just in case people don't have a MailChimp account set up yet, or maybe they do, but they've just forgotten. So maybe it might be useful just touching on like, you know, that you need an audience first before you create a campaign and things like that. So what's actually needed? Okay. You begin? Yeah, so... Um, Obviously, I can't show you the from the scratch because this is an existing account. Um, yep. But when you log in again, if you can remember how to log in, it's easy to remember um, how to get in, how to get access. Um, you can double check if you've got audiences in the audience section here uh, before, because you need an audience set up for you to begin an automated. Um, oh, I've lost you. All right, here we go. To uh, begin an automation workflow. Um, so you'll be able to see them in here if you have one. If you don't, you can easily create a new audience. Um, and I'll show you how, if my uh, computer can catch up with you. <laughs> uh, so here is creating your audience. So there's another uh, issue now. They only limit you to have five lists. Uh, you can't have any more because best practice is to have one main list. So you used to be able to have multiple lists. So mm. anyway, and a, list, a list is an audience. Uh, yes, sorry, an yeah. audience. They used to call them lists. Now it's okay, audience. Yeah. So you click create audience here, and you just import your CSV or copy and paste your spreadsheet over. Um, would you like me to show you how to do that? Um, no, I probably don't have time no. to go into all the yeah. details. But yeah, okay. but so this is where your audience would sit. Yeah. Okay. Fab. And so you go in with the mindset of having as little audiences as possible. So ideally yeah. you have one audience and then you use other things like groups and tags and segments as that audience grows. To yes. Manage that audience. Yeah. So it, it is always best practice to have that one master list and then you begin to segment and make kind of small groups and tag people as and when they come in and why they're there. So you kind of have an understanding of your customer base basically. Yeah, and that's a really good point because the amount of MailChimp accounts I've logged into and I've seen they've got like 20 audiences and audiences are created in, I guess, 
with the wrong mindset that it's like every time they send a campaign they create an audience which is, isn't what you should be doing no and then also you have the same customer in multiple lists so it's quite conflicting and then there's also a risk of sending the incorrect campaign um you know you could have multiple campaigns running for a range of products and then this customer's already had an email from you that week so then you yeah. end up bombarding people with loads of communications and then they'll just end up unsubscribing. Um, so yeah. that's kind of what you want to avoid and that's why you want to keep one big list and kind of um, tag that person multiple times so you understand their behaviour, basically. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So you've got your audience set up. Yeah. So then, of course, you can go through then and create your automation. Yes. Your campaign. Campaign, yes. Um, they do have this new part here, which we won't go into today that's um it's definitely becoming more of a marketing crm uh as as they grow but this is where you would create your email uh, automation which is in campaigns which is this here you click on that there you go and then you have this dark gray button here which you click create campaign so this is the same process um when you just create a one-off email until you click into here, which is email. And then you have this section here and you click automated. Uh, okay. Yeah. So here they have kind of like these pre-made um, automations for you, or you can create your own. Mm -hmm. um, I generally just go to welcome new subscriber because that's kind of a nice layout. So I usually just click that. And then you can either have a single email, which is fine, or you can have a series uh, either either do the same thing really because you're going to go in and edit them yourself but it kind of just gives you a foundation for you to work from um, so okay. I just click onboarding series and then I'll say we'll do um, and then you select your audience so this is why you can't go any further so you need to have an audience set up already otherwise you can't create your automation yep So this will ensure then basically as somebody signs up to that audience, then they will get sent this email. Correct. So there you go. So this is kind of what they provide you as a kind of layout. You can move these around, you can delete them. Um, it's not it's not set in stone, um, but it just kind of gives you an idea of how many emails you would want to create for a series, which, um, is here is uh five which is yeah pretty much right five six emails uh even seven well as many as you like really but i would say as a rule of thumb you probably need around five emails okay um, to keep your customer engaged over either um a number of weeks or months depending on your business and the types of customers that you have so you could set that to go out once a week or once a month yeah yeah, initially, so I would say, so your first email, I would always say immediate, so that um, allows your customer to see that they've actually joined this automation and that whatever action they've done has worked. So say if it's uh, they've joined the email list, they'll say like, oh, welcome to blah, blah, blah's email. Mm -hmm. um, and then after a week or so, you'd um, send them the next email and the next one. And I would say, yeah, seven Seven days is probably a nice number. Uh, yeah. But this is something that you can experiment with. As your workflow is running for a number of months, you can change it and split test it and things like that. So uh, you can get pretty uh, detailed with it, really. I guess it totally depends on what you're doing the automation for, right? Whether it's like yeah. a short campaign, you're trying to get uh, like a Black Friday promo or something, or like a webinar promo, and you're trying to get people to sign up for something by a certain date, then it might be every few days. Exactly. So it's, it's just a more long-term um, nurture that's dripped out over time. Yeah, that's why it's hard to say because it really depends what your automation's for. If it is something that is very time sensitive, then yes, you'd want them more frequently. You can set them at certain times. Um, you can send a few a day. If you say you could do one in the morning and then a few hours before, if you want them to log into something to watch something, then you can do that as well. And this is all set here. So um, within the schedule, you can edit it within here. Um, so you can say, um, 
when it can be sent. So you can say, even if you want it to be seven days afterwards, you may, might want to say that it, you only want it to send on a Thursday. Generally, I don't as a rule of thumb. You just want it to flow as and when the people um, enter the workflow. Uh, otherwise, that could become a bit tricky to measure. And then if it is time sensitive, it could get a bit messy. So I would just put every day. Um, but then if you do want to control when it's sent, I would say times. So that's what I usually do. So I'd usually experiment and send it first thing in the morning or in the evening. And then you can keep changing that and see how that um, shows up in your reporting. Uh, but generally, I would say every day it should go out or whatever day they join, basically. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, if there is a time sensitive um, purpose to your workflow, then you'd obviously want to put you only want to send it on on the Tuesday before and you just untick the rest of the days. Like yeah. Um, and how often would you test that time? Because if you were like changing up times, do you like leave it to run for a month or so and then change the time? Or how do you do yeah, that? Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it too often. I think that's pretty much a rule of thumb for a lot of digital uh, marketing. You kind of need to leave it rolling for a while. Um, otherwise, you're just kind of interfering with the results and you can't really see what's working. So I would leave it working for a month or really it depends how long your workflow is working for. So if your workflow is going across a period of two months, then you'd probably let it run through the workflow twice and then change it so then you have some data to uh, kind of um, experiment with. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you, you won't be able to see what you're doing, what, what what's working really. So if you do keep uh, tweaking it, which I am guilty of doing, then you won't, you won't be able to see the benefits, but it is best just to let it run. Yeah. If you can. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, so that's the scheduling part of it here. Um, and this is where you can also filter here as well. So you want, so even though you're sending it to your larger audience, you might have a segment or some people will be tagged as a certain thing in order for them to get into the workflow, which is probably best. So say, for example, if they download something off your website, you'd tag them as download and then you would add it into here. So mm -hmm. you'd make sure they, their tag is in this. So that uh, confirms that only those people tagged under that download will only get this email. Uh, so yeah, you can do it in here, which is the only tag that I have in this test audience, which is there. And yeah. then you save. And then you'll be able to see that here, it'll show conditions when you have it and then none when you don't. So that's something you can just do a little run through when you are checking it before you make it go live. And then you also have post send actions here. So you can um, add them into groups, you can remove the tag um, and things like that. So you kind of have like follow up actions as well, which is handy for if you want to do kind of a follow up workflow. So say if, if there's some stragglers who haven't completed it, someone who did click something in your email, you can tag them and then you can send them on to the next one if you want to do something like that as well. And this is where um, I guess it gets much more advanced because ideally you've yeah. got loads of these set up that are a lot different. So if, yeah. say, for example, you had different call to actions on your website, like one that was download a brochure, one of them was um, request a call back, and one of them was like sign up for a webinar. Or something so then you'd have three different automations based on those three different actions on your website and you would set up those tags so when people filled out those forms on your website they potentially got tagged and then you could set up a different automation um, yeah flow for each of them yeah you can yeah you can get really granular and really detailed which is really good because you can possibly set up your welcome workflow have that running for a month or two and then think oh what else do I want to learn or what else do I want to kind of feed into my customer base and then you can design a, your second workflow for that so after it's running for a few months you see who the engaged people are they'll already be tagged because you set this up in your first one and then you can do a next one and nurture them in another way and it'll be even more specific and relevant to them yeah. The idea. but you could be there for days so you kind of have to just um limit it to your important stuff first as you're yeah. using the system and then just um kind of just keep checking in every week and then kind of start thinking about what else you could be doing because there's loads you can do in mailchimp yeah um, so start simple start simple start with one yes. and then go from there 
Yes. So okay. rein yourself in. You'll have loads of ideas, I imagine. Um, and then just kind of filter it into like the basics, what you need to know, keep them engaged, and then go from there. Yeah. Um, I guess the other part I didn't show you. So you have all these elements here. And then you also have the design, which is exactly the same as if you just make a basic email campaign. Um, so this is the drag and drop builder. Uh, so yeah, so you need to, you name it, you put your subject line in and everything like that. So I'll just show you if you haven't seen it. So even though you selected welcome to our community as the template, obviously you can just totally edit this. So yes. it doesn't need to be a welcome, it's just no. the wording they put in. Exactly. So these are these pre-built email templates, which are all great. Some of them you have to upgrade. I think it's, so I'm using my uh, business account, but I think it's um, up to the third one here. You, you have to pay for these ones. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, it just, that's the way it is. And I think on here as well. Uh, but you can have the first two for free and they're more than enough. Um, they're the ones I like anyway. I tend to use them regardless. And then you obviously have, hopefully you, you could have templates, which are actually, you probably should design your templates first. Probably should have mentioned that. So um, when you set up, when you start thinking about setting up your workflow, I would recommend having two templates, probably set up a newsletter and then a promo campaign one. Um, so say a newsletter, I'm gonna quickly show you. Um, so you can see, set this up in advance. Yeah, so set them up in advance. You have the style, it usually replicates your branding or your website so people are familiar with it or it looked like the blog post that you've created so people aren't kind of thrown off by who you are so you look familiar. Um, and then you can see that this this one, I would say, is a newsletter template and has lots of different sections in it. And then you'd have a simple one, which looks like uh, this, which I set up for today, which is just one image, um, one message, and just keep it nice and simple. Um, it looks nothing it's like so the other It's so easy to edit these, isn't it? Yeah. And you can just keep reusing them. It's just that it takes you potentially like 10 minutes if you're fat. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's super simple. Um, it's great actually. Um, and you can even, if I go back to templates here, um, you obviously have your templates, but then you have campaigns here. Uh, so you can see like what you've sent and your draft. So say if you have forgotten to create a template, it's not an issue. And then you're like, oh, I wanna send what a similar style to what I sent last time. So you can go into your recently sent and you can see everything that you've sent in the past. So you can just replicate there. So it's not like it's lost if you don't have a template. Um, but yeah, that's another option. Uh, so say I'll just pick this one, uh, which is in the design already. And then just um, save and continue. And then that's there, that's sitting in there then. Okay, fab. And then, so that's your immediate one, which is welcome. And then you basically just keep building as you go. And then the only difference is, so see here, it says immediately after subscribed contact, you mm -hmm. edit this part here, which is the trigger. And usually it's if, um, if they've received the first one is usually it. Or you could even say if, it, if they've not opened it, so say that you're trying to get them to do something. So in the past I've sent, um if you want them to renew their subscription so there's mm -hmm. a deadline for something so if they've not opened it you know that they've not done anything with it so you keep pushing that because you obviously don't want to bother people if they have opened it and they have engaged with the email that's just kind of um yeah, yeah it just bother people so you'd um put if they've not opened it so you can keep pushing uh, the workflow until um they the action the email basically so there's loads you can do that's interesting so that would be a workflow to trying to get them to take action and yeah. we'd literally just send it to people who haven't opened the email yeah and then and then the people who have opened it but haven't necessarily called you or clicked um it's just a softer way so you don't bombard people with the same message all over again uh, and yeah. that's probably a good way of using that that part of it uh, but usually it's just if they've been sent, get something else, especially if it's just a resource kind of flow. 
it's yeah. relevant to everyone so you just keep it nice and simple and relevant for everyone um and just keep sending it out every week or and however and that's what um I guess I use these a lot for or work with clients with because all mine are social media campaigns. So quite often it'd be from a Facebook lead generation campaign or a LinkedIn lead generation campaign. Um, so if you are doing social advertising, this is amazing because if you're using a lead form, and we've done lives about lead forms in the past, which you can now do on Facebook and LinkedIn. So you're getting people to sign up for a webinar in a lead form or download a guide or a piece of content then of course you can get that email sent straight to MailChimp and then they'd be automatically put into this workflow. So then you are nurturing them um, with content, um, which is great. And Facebook automatically integrates with MailChimp now. So that's that email gets sent from Facebook to MailChimp straight away. And with LinkedIn, you can automate that integration by using Zapier, which is a third party tool. Um, there's not a direct integration yet, but you can use Zapier, which zaps the email from LinkedIn over to MailChimp into this list. Um, so you could say LinkedIn tag it as LinkedIn lead form, and then they get sent a series of six emails, for example. And we've got that running for a client at the moment, haven't we, Jen? So the, yeah. the, the leads generated from LinkedIn through a LinkedIn lead ad, and then they're sent, I think it's a series of six or five emails. Six, um, yeah. yeah. And it's just kind of giving them drip feeding them content that already exists on their website and just kind of lets the customer know that they're still there. And I think it's working quite nicely. Yeah, getting really good engagement rates. And that's a great point because it's a great way to reuse content that's already on your site, isn't it? So you've got all that blog content on your site. Um, so with that, I mean that with that particular campaign, there was a big uplift in the fourth email, wasn't there, of engagement? Is that a normal thing, or is that just a bit of a random thing? That the fourth email that got sent has suddenly had yeah. a big open rate. I think it was something to do with the content in the email, unless that's a trend that you see quite often. Uh, let me just check um, because I was looking at that this morning. I think it might have been the subject matter. Um, yeah. Uh, we kind of, uh, yeah, there was some kind of urgency in that content. I think that might have pushed it along because we were sending it at the same time. So there was no other um, different, dif um, what's the word? Different, different. Differentiator. Nothing else was different. <laughs> That's a tricky you. one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it was the content, I think, there. It was the last minute kind yeah. of um, urgency in the subject line. But then it could also be uh, because we are only, we're only in our second month now, aren't we, for that workflow? Yeah. It could be that this the sales cycle is at that point. So maybe it's, you know, when we when we send that four weeks, that's when they're ready. Because the, um, the flow of emails is quite long because it's B2B. Mm -hmm. So it could be, you know, we are kind of staying in their sites as we're sending them every week and then fourth and the fourth week maybe they're like oh yeah we're ready now yeah it could also be that um, yeah you just can't you just don't know <laughs> until you, you've you've until you've had it working for a long time really yeah testing testing okay fab so so then that's pretty much any any more of this automation then so you're literally just keep Adding yeah, so you out. keep adding, you can delete them. Which this is another thing I really like about MailChimp is that it makes you it really hard to delete anything. I hate I it though. I really I like it. Uh, I hate it when it sometimes it makes you write permanently delete, doesn't it? And that's really hard to spell permanently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really got to think. Like Differentiate. <laughs> I can't say that either. Um, yeah, so you can add, move. Um, yeah, and so it's basically just like building a normal campaign, but then you're just stacking them on each other, and then you're doing the little triggers, um, which you can keep tweaking as you go. So then you click next. Can you see so that? If somebody unsubscribes from this automation, would they then get unsubscribed from your whole list? Yes. Okay. Yes, they yeah. will. Um, yeah, that was a big sigh then after I said that. Unfortunately, <laughs> it will. <laughs> they will. And it's, 
Is, if they unsubscribe, is there any way, do you ever do campaigns to bring unsubscribers back in? Or you literally have to tempt them again, right? Either on your website or through another piece of content out in the digital world for them to resubscribe. You can't email them after they've unsubscribed, can you? No. So there is a workflow that you can do when people unsubscribe. So you can say like, oh, sorry, what you're leaving. Are you sure? That kind of thing. Um, but then after that, no. Um, they can resubscribe, and that's. Um, but they have they have to do that on the, off their own back, yep. and they have to update their preferences through their account that they have in Mailchimp. Yep. Um, so yeah, no, they make it very difficult, which is a good thing because you don't want to just be emailing people that don't want to be emailed. Yeah, um, but it's not the end of the world if people unsubscribe. I mean, if, if no. they want, if they're not interested in what you do, then you know you're paying per person as well with mailchimp so you only want to be paying for the contacts who are actually engaging with you right and who are going to exactly respond. and it's like that um quality over quantity you don't just want a really big list and no one's listening that's just quite upsetting i think so yeah um if you've got a good list and high engagement then that's better than having a massive list and no one really is opening or doing anything or buying anything it's better to have a small list yeah. anyway and then yeah it's cheaper so yeah you want, you want that same with social platforms right yeah, I mean, you exactly want engaging not just ignoring you so it's, yeah it's like um you know when people buy followers and things like that because they just want a bigger list there's no, there's no point doing that yeah, yeah. uh sorry it's just because i've just mocked this up that it's saying something that's okay um required for the events It's amazing how little, how many business owners aren't doing this that I work with. You know, simple thing as just nurturing leads that come in. Um, and I'm really pushing it now, especially again from like a Facebook point of view, is, you know, generating all of these leads and then just getting left there um, and not being followed up. So it's just absolutely vital if you're doing any lead generation activity to be having a workflow set up like this in MailChimp. Um, yeah, it is, it, it's mad, isn't it? Like, you, because you spend that time and effort um, and to then not kind of look after those customers um, yeah. so it is a waste, really. But then it's, again, you know, it's a time, it's if people have time to. Yeah, 100%. But, you know, this can all be automated and it's worth yeah. investing in. Um, Absolutely. Uh, it's better. get someone like you to do it, Jen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly um it'll be much nicer than that um horrible welcome image that was just <laughs> a stock image that i found <laughs> oh, oh it's not oh, it's because i have a rushed and set it up let me show you um that's another thing you can exit it and start educate educate again uh, okay. without you do so you don't have to um that was pretty much done there though, was it so you designed yeah, the no. workflow you design the workflow and you just click, um, I'll just show you um, one that I've got already. Um, termination campaign. Would you recommend that there's the last email has like a big call to action at the end of it? Or do you design yeah. them in a, in a way, like do you have a strategy around how you, what call to action you have in each email? Yeah, so, um, it kind of it's softer at the beginning and then if you've got um a, well you obviously should always have a reason why you're doing the workflow and then you kind of put um a bit more immediacy and urgency into what it is you want them to do at the end so uh, last minute don't forget we'll miss you um you kind of start trickling that in so it's obviously not too salesy but it is and you don't want that at the beginning so it's more kind of just like welcoming nice kind of you're part of our community and then also don't forget you've got to do this and that's why you're in the workflow uh, that's yeah. kind of my process um and you can see here i this is from a someone who is this, uh, a paying customer of ours so say if their contract's running uh they're, they'll then um, obviously the service will stop if they don't renew the contract so this okay. is just a, a reminder of a period of eight weeks, mm -hmm. um, which we did. Um, and then the last one's miss you. Uh, so it's still nice. 
uh, yeah. But, yeah, it's just a little bit, uh, the messaging is uh, clearer near the end. Um, and here, here is what I wanted to show you is this bit. So you'll see here um, that uh, you'll see your audience and you see add contacts, remove contacts. So what can happen, which has happened in the one that we were working on, if you um, have it set up and your list is already there, you need to then kind of uh, give MailChimp an extra push, uh, which happens a lot actually. So if you click into add contacts here, you usually have to do another push again. So say if you are wanting it to go to everyone, you just always click entire list and say add subscribers and then the queue starts um because a lot of the time you can set up your automation and it's all live and the audience number's there but no one's in the queue so you just need to kind of give it an extra push is my little tip okay but, yeah that, that's happened quite a lot hasn't it yeah over, yeah yeah because um it's obviously it's always immediate i think that's where the problem is so it's immediately after they're added but they're already there so i don't think the system always notices that it's new so you usually Got need it. to give it that little push yeah. yeah so for anyone who's historically in the list basically if you want to put them into the workflow you have to manually add them in yeah that's right because they're not being added amazing okay fab anything else mm -hmm. automation uh it's 10 yeah, past one too. Yeah, i didn't realize how quick the time would have gone <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot about automation but uh that's kind of all you need to know really um there will be uh there's loads of elements to it, but basically all you need to do is start your welcome workflow, design your emails, just do simple triggers um, every week, every five days, have it running for a few months, maybe change it up and see which works better. If you think that your engagement is a little low, if it works, then don't change it. Um, and yeah, and then see what, what happens to your audiences and then you can possibly create a new one after that and kind of have a plan of where you want your audiences to um what you want what you want your audience to do basically have that in mind when you start yeah and i think the very first step is just doing it right that's i think that's yeah. the biggest hurdle is probably a lot of people aren't even doing this so no. refining the automations and doing more is great but you know if you've got a campaign running at the moment or you are generating leads from your website or from content downloads, you know, make sure that you have a, a, an automation set up and it's it's fairly fairly simple to be able to do that through MailChimp. Um, so yeah. it's really good insight just to show business owners and marketers that that's how they, that's how they set that up. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Fabulous, thanks Jen. Any other questions mm -hmm. come in? So I think we've, we've touched on all these points as we've been going throughout. Um, Oh, glad that's really be glad that's been useful, Nicole. Give, 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 and then ask. Yes, one hundred percent. So with the workflow, you're giving them content, giving them content at the beginning, and then asking for something at the end. As Jen said, that's if you're doing a content um, workflow. But I think that's it. You've answered all my questions. What I what confuses me, but I think this is a different. Um, the whole different lunchtime live is when you get into actually organizing the list and organizing the audience. But that's a bit yeah. more advanced when you've got a very big list. As you are growing that, what is the best way to use tags, segments, and groups? I think is the next step. Um, but you'd only really get into all of that stuff once the list is growing and you're constantly refining your list and keeping it clean and tidy. Because I imagine. If you you have bad habits, it it starts slipping and <laughs> yeah, it's super easy for that to happen. And that I've um, in the past that has happened because you have it just ticking over and you and keep sending loads of campaigns, have loads of automations, and then you start looking at your customers and you're just like, oh, like why why is all that there? So you can easily tidy it up. Um, it's yep. not like once it's done, it's um, in there. Uh, but I would say possibly start with tags at the beginning because they're very easy to add in and take out and um, so as as you're trying to segment it go from there and then as it gets bigger start using the segments and groups to try and understand who they are um but i wouldn't say use them at the beginning because that would get super confusing so yeah. just tags for now simple tagging just tags 
Yeah. And then the one thing which my top tool to use, again, this is from, oh, I just got rid of you. Doesn't matter. Uh, we'll get rid of the screen. This is from a, a social media point of view is Zapier. So if you're doing, I know we've got some B2B marketeers watching. And also I use Zapier to automatically tag people who download content from our Squarespace website to send them into MailChimp. Um, they automatically get sent into MailChimp, but they don't automatically get tagged. Yeah. Which is it's really annoying. Yeah. Um, so um, Zapier is a third party tool that allows you to automate all of that tagging. Yeah, and like again, that. yeah, automate um, leads from your LinkedIn lead forms and sending those into MailChimp and tagging them. Zapier works great with MailChimp, doesn't it? There's loads mm. of good automations to link MailChimp with other tools. Yeah, and, and MailChimp uh, integrates with a lot of other things as well. Um, trying to think, we I'm currently working on something like an e-commerce uh, functionality on a website um and uh, it integrates with loads of things like go card lists and things like that mm. when you're setting up um lots of payments which i imagine a lot of people need to do um yeah. and i find that mailchimp out of most of the email tools does sync with loads of other different software uh, so that's another reason why i do use mailchimp um because of that it's another reason to love mailchimp yeah <laughs> and they have great adverts Send yeah. their email. That's yeah, my yeah. favorite one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this American one. Yeah, it is good. It is a good, um, it's a good tool. I've yeah. always used it really. I've dabbled in and out of doing, uh, using other tools, but whenever I uh, want to help someone with their email uh, marketing, uh, MailChimp is the easiest for both me and them. So. Yep. Oh, so we've got just a last minute question coming here. Can you automatically create new audiences in MailChimp by using tags? Um, so you would have your audience set up first. So you can set up your audience without anyone in it. So you just have to create that audience. So you'd, uh, whatever you're doing it for, so say if it's website leads, you'd call it website leads. And when you set up that trigger, say on your website, it is then flow into the audience. Does that make sense? Yeah, you wouldn't want it. You wouldn't. Can you automatically? Would you? you but you wouldn't want to create new audiences, would you, by using tags? No, no. If you, I only, if you only create five audiences anyway, that's yeah. Not... Oh, sorry. That's uh, so. I thought you meant like you know, if you have an audience there but no one's in there, then you can okay. do it that way. Um, no. If you were automatically using tags, no. I guess that would happen. So you'd keep that audience as one. It's best practice to have that one audience. And then as you your tags or the audience members with certain tags grows, you can then create segments within that one audience to then understand how large that is, if you see what I mean. Because uh, obviously you'll be able to see how many tags are in your audience. But if you create a segment, you can then start um, sending them workflows and campaigns just to those specific tags. Uh, but I wouldn't create separate audiences. I'd just start sectioning them off. So you can basically create new segments yes. using tags. So you've yeah. still got your one audience. Correct. It's all about the lingo, isn't it? Yeah, and there's loads of words that mean the same thing. And even I find myself saying lists when I mean audience. Yeah. So it's, it's all very uh, jargon heavy. Uh, well, but it all means your, cu your customer, basically. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Amazing. Oh, Nicole said, yeah, that's what I meant, but I used the wrong term. <laughs> See, everyone does it. Everyone does it. <laughs> Especially if they're updating the terminology. Yeah, um, it used to be lists and now it's audiences. So yeah. It's just so we need a MailChimp yeah. jargon, like, buster. Yeah, a little, a little dictionary. I'll set yeah. one up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm reluctant to go, Jo. I'm having so much fun talking to you, but we don't need to sign off now. It's 20 past one. We're just chatting away here. Um, <laughs> So thank you so much for doing that and coming on and showing us how to set up an automation. Really, really useful. Um, I know it's going to be useful for a lot of people. I've had a lot of people ask for this. And um, so I know a lot of people will be catching it on the down um, the recording as well. And I'll, um, so we probably have we'll have some more questions coming in. Um, but really, really great resource. And hopefully we can have you back sometime to talk Absolutely. more about mail. It was lovely. <laughs> so thanks, Gary, initially, but it was lovely in the end. You're a pro. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Thanks for joining everybody. Have a good day. And remember, any more questions, just ask them on the comments and um, Jen will be sure to jump in and answer them post post live. See you later. Bye.